Dennis Prager here. Thanks for listening to the Daily Dennis Prager Podcast. To hear the entire three hours of my radio show, commercial-free, every single day, become a member of PragerTopia. You'll also get access to 15 years' worth of archives, as well as the daily show prep. Subscribe at PragerTopia.com. Well, this is it, everybody. The last show prior to Thanksgiving of 2022. How did we get here? It was just January. This is a riddle. They will be best of, which are very, very popular, so that the entire staff of the program can have the weekend holiday. So hearing me live is the day before Thanksgiving. But definitely tune in tomorrow and Friday. You will enjoy things that are not dated. And gentlemen, I just want to say it is a joy to watch Sebastian Gorka on on the screen. I want to thank you. I'm very close to him. <laughs> but And it is not at all confusing for me to stare into a camera and see Sebastian Gorka. <laughs> My uh, my good friend, which he indeed is. There's an article in today's Los Angeles Times about how Thanksgiving should go the way of Columbus Day. It should be noted. Yeah, it should cannot, be noted. That you cannot have a Thanksgiving yeah. without the L.A. Times. Dumping. Yeah, no, that's correct. The, the It's not just Thanksgiving. Well, yeah. So they, uh, what it, remember what the New York Times did last Passover? It was it, they for every religious holiday, the New York Times, the L.A. Times. I don't know about the Washington Post, but I would presume it would be similar. Will write an article debunking the validity of of that holiday. People who have nothing hate those who have something, and I don't mean in terms of material possessions. They have nothing. They don't have religion. They don't have love of country. They have nothing. And they hate those who have something. I wrote about this many years ago in explaining George Soros. George Soros has no religious or national identity, and he hates those who do have a religious or national identity. The left is, their identity is the identity of biology. And I don't even mean male, female, because they don't even have that. It is the identity of blood. That is the only identity the left has, the identity of race. I don't know what produces these people, but they have been produced. And if you remember that every day I have reason to say everything the left touches, it destroys. Columbus Day is gone, although the hypocrisy is beyond measure. Columbia University is named after Columbus. They wouldn't tamper with their name because it would hurt fundraising. What are they going to, what, what, what will they name it after an indigenous a Native American? Well, who, who would they name it after if they don't have it as Columbia University? Be interesting would be what the College of Manhattan. Anyway, Manhattan was stolen. No, no, that was sold. Ooh, I guess Manhattan's legit. Remember, Manhattan was bought by the Dutch from uh, from natives Native Americans. There was a, a a large group of students, mostly uh, I think Israeli American or Israelis in America uh, who were studying, and they, what did they just write? Did you see that? It was a very powerful thing. Oh, yes, to the Harvard Crimson. The Harvard Crimson basically spoke about Israel's illegitimacy because the land had, uh, uh, in their view, been Palestinian. Of course, there was never a Palestinian sovereign state in that area, in the history of the area, only Jewish states. The first one until 586 B.C., the second one until 70 A.D., and the third one 
f- uh, formed in 1948. There's, there was never an Arab sovereign state there or a Muslim sovereign state. So they said, you know, the uh, Harvard, Harvard is located on land that once belonged to Native Americans. Why doesn't Harvard disband? Why isn't there a, uh, what, what is it, the B, B, D, uh, the movement? Uh, BDS. BDS. Why isn't there a BDS movement against Harvard? <laughs> so you, let me explain what animates the Los Angeles Times writers and these professors. This is a USC professor. USC is has sunk as, as low as uh, any of them. Why... What animates them? Partially, it is this. They, they really have nothing that gives their life meaning. Having no religion and no patriotism, they, they are bereft of God and country, if you will, two profoundly animating impulses in modern Western history. So since the yearning for meaning is the greatest yearning in the human condition, and that I do believe, outside of biological yearnings like food and shelter, it is the greatest yearning. This is what gives these empty people, and professor and empty are almost always synonymous. This is what gives these empty people meaning. So what will I do today? I will write a piece for the Los Angeles Times, edited by empty people, and I will fill the void that is in my life with meaning. I am fighting thanksgiving. That is some great achievement. Who is this uh, professor? What is it? What is his name? Let's see, their name. I mean, I do, I'm, I'm assuming it's a male. I, I, uh, I don't know if that is wrong. Peter C. Moncal. That's right. The Mellon Professor of Humanities at USC. So he has a distinguished title at USC. Well. The article was published in partnership with Zocalo Public Square. Are you familiar with that? Interesting. Just thinking about yeah. Andrew Mellon. Well, as the rethinking, this is how the article ends, as the rethinking of Columbus Day and the public's broader understanding of slavery and American history through educational programs like the 1619 Project have shown, this is a real serious scholar. It is not too late to make progress. Rather than see this holiday as an opportunity to gorge on a meal, gorge, oh, we don't celebrate a meal with, with family and friends. No, we gorge on a meal and dwell on naive fantasies about a period of accord. It could become an opportunity to retell the history of the United States, putting indigenous experiences at the center, at the center instead of the periphery. Andrew Mellon knew that his money was going oh, to be used. Oh, that's a good point. If Andrew he, Mellon knew what, what, he, he, what his he, name would be used for, not would, just he, his money. Be, he would have buried his fortune in the uh, Yes, yeah, it would have been, he would have done better yeah. burying his fortune. Yeah. That's right. So it's an interesting question. So are indigenous experiences the center of American history? No. This doesn't deny the tragedy that befell the indigenous people if they were indigenous. I don't know if they supplanted people who were here before they came. I don't I just don't know. No, I don't know if anyone knows. But it's not the center of the American experience. The center of the American experience is what Americans did, including bad things. 
Is there a nation that has been indigenous throughout its history? Is there a nation in the world that did not supplant people who had lived there before they did? I don't know the answer to that question. I don't know if anyone knows the answer to that question. But by and large, that is what what has happened. And what do you what do you do culturally? The Christianization of Europe should that should that be undone? How about the Islamization of North Africa? Nobody would talk about that though, because the left is not known for its courage. Hey, folks, coming together again after two years of waiting. I'm going on a listener cruise again. It's called Gems of Southeastern Europe, May 31 to June 13. 13 days combined land and cruise on AMA waterways. We are chartering our own ship for you and me. The cruise was just announced. It's already almost sold out. Book today at 800-345-2483. Or click the banner on my website, go to coastlinetravel.com. Again, everybody, we're chartering the entire boat. 800-345-2483. It will sell out. Or click the banner on my website. Or go to coastlinetravel.com. Well, hello, everybody. Every holiday, religious or secular... In the United States, the major newspapers, or what were once major newspapers, feature some column debunking the holiday. It bothers the left to know that Americans celebrate America, let alone celebrate anything religious. That's what is at the core of all of this. This professor at USC... What a great thing that kids are studying now. The 1619 Project, debunked by even liberal historians, is essentially a lie. But it doesn't matter. If truth were a left-wing value, there would be no left-wing. I mean that literally. There would be liberals and there would be conservatives, but there would be no left. A country that gave more people liberty both in its country and around the world than any other has its elites, its best educated, its most affluent. Vast numbers of those people are trying to destroy it. It is an astonishing thing. So he teaches at USC. Listen to uh, what is going on at USC. Lawrence Peck wrote about this this week. When a professor of communications at the university attempted to educate his students about Chinese linguistic patterns, you haven't read this. This will blow your mind. Is this, the, this is a new story? You sure that this is new? Or this is no, it is new, yeah. It just came November 20th. Okay. I mean, it may be about something that happened before. Yes, I, I, I it know. did, yeah. This is, the, the, the writing just came out. It's about what's happening at USC over the last few years. Okay. Okay. When a professor of communications at the university attempted to educate his students about Chinese linguistic patterns, explaining the meaning of a Chinese word that, to the uneducated ear of American students, sounded similar to the N-word, he was reported as a racist and suspended from teaching the class. Now, do you understand what I just read to you, my, my dear listener uh, and some viewers? Do you, do you fully understand that? He was reading some Chinese words... And they sounded similar to the English N-word. 
and he was reported as a racist. He was suspended from teaching for saying a Chinese word. Greg Patton is a professor at USC's Marshall School of Business and an expert in communication, interpersonal, and leadership effectiveness, whatever that means. During the fall 2020 semester, Patton taught an online class during which he spoke about the use of filler words in the speech of various languages. You know what a filler word is, folks? Um, uh, er, like would be a good one. That's a good, a, good, a good example. So he said, if you have a lot of ums and ers, this is culturally specific. So based on your native language, like in China, the common word is that, that, that. So in China, it might be nege, 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 um, N-E-I-G-E, N-E-I-G-E. To a native Chinese speaker, the word sounds nothing like the American racial slur, especially because they have tones. Patton himself has worked in China, although is not a fluent speaker of Chinese. A number of African American students were so offended that they sent a letter to the Marshall School of Business, Dean Jeffrey Garrett, accusing Patton of racial insensitivity and stating that he was unfit to teach the class. The way we heard it in class was indicative of a much more hurtful word with tremendous implications for the black community, stated the student's letter. There are over 10,000 characters in the Chinese written language, and to use this phrase, a clear synonym with this derogatory N-word term, by the way, it's not a synonym, it's a homonym. It sounds like it, but it's not a synonym. They used synonym wrong is hurtful and unacceptable to our USC Marshall community. Uh, there's a, Did you know there's a USC Marshall community? Community is one of the left's favorite words. Yeah. It's used to create a totalitarian framework. We, we, we all must think alike because we're a community. The negligence and disregard displayed by our professor was very clear in today's class. The letter was signed, Black MBA Candidates 2022. Wow. This, this, this represents a belief of mine that is true having nothing to do with politics. You choose when to be insulted. It's a choice. They chose to be. There was no insult. There was no insult in any way, neither intentionally nor unintentionally. Dean Garrett wrote back to the complaining students and explained that Professor Patton would be removed as the instructor of the course. This is the university whose Mellon Professor of the Humanities writes in today's L.A. Times against Thanksgiving. USC's dissent is steep. It is simply unacceptable. This is what the dean uh, wrote, Dean Garrett, Jeffrey Garrett. He is the, the Marshall School of Business dean, Jeffrey Garrett. Barrett. Garrett. No, Garrett is right. It is simply unacceptable for faculty to use words in class that can marginalize, hurt, and harm the psychological safety of our students. Psychological safety. So a student hears a word in Chinese that sounds like the N-word of English, and that is harming, marginalizing, and hurting the psychological safety of that student. Wow. This is 
When we return, I will tell you what I think a dean who actually cared for and about black students would actually have said. This is a perfect example of the greatest racism in America, that of the left. Back in a moment. History repeats itself, and we're seeing that play out with inflation. When Jimmy Carter took office in the late 70s, gold sold for $140 an ounce. By 1980, the price of gold topped out at $870 an ounce. If today's market performs like it did when Carter was in office, the price of gold could skyrocket from $1,800 an ounce to $9,300 an ounce. This is Dennis Prager for AmFed Coin and Bullion. Don't miss out on a great opportunity to purchase precious metals while the prices are still stable. If history repeats itself, we'll see a run on gold, silver, and platinum that will certainly drive up prices. Be smart and buy now, as I am. At AmFed, you're dealing with specialists who provide you with personalized attention, honest information, and sound advice. You'll never be pressured into buying outrageously priced so-called collectible coins or anything that you don't need. Take advantage of today's prices. AmFed Coin and Bullion, 800-221-7694. AmericanFederal.com. AmericanFederal.com. So I'm going to get back to uh, my USC story in a moment, but first I want to talk to this individual, Vinny Tortorich. He's a renowned fitness expert, host of the Fitness Confidential podcast. A lot of people don't know this. A lot of people do, of course. We have so many views, but a lot of people don't know that PragerU puts up a lot of videos that have nothing to do with politics and anything related to that. This is an example this week's America is Fat, But You Don't Have to Be. Vinny Tortorich, you're the man. Welcome to the show again. Dennis, my friend. You know, it, it, it upsets me that I, can, I can't be in the studio with you anymore because <laughs> I moved out of Southern California. I used to look forward to seeing your smiling face, and uh, now we have to do it like this. Where do you live now? Uh, we moved to Central Virginia uh, a, a couple of years ago. Right, I always say right before the world changed, right before the pandemic. And I got to tell you, I could not be happier uh, that we were actually out of there because, you know, I have to travel back all of the time because I do my documentaries out of California and everything else, and my vitamin company's still there. And when I go back, and I know we're going to talk about this video, but when I go back seems like bizarro world to me because um i still see people walking around with masks on and and six feet apart and the whole thing and it's like i feel like when they would find these people in vietnam that didn't know the war was over they were still out in the jungle <laughs> yeah you know? and, and world war ii as well with japanese yes they, they, yeah, yeah they, it, they, 20 years later they, yeah. they were out in the woods you know? that's a great analogy actually Vinny. i i, I I totally get it. I'm very happy you're happy where you are. And this is probably a very, uh, weather-wise, it's probably a beautiful time of the year now. Oh, we've been raking in leaves, uh, and and it's, you know, tomorrow, of course, is Thanksgiving. And uh, it's actually fun to see, you know, seasons come and go. You know, it kind of really puts a punctuation on life. That's that's very uh, true. You get to see it. Yeah. Yeah. Vinny, what, what is your theory uh, on why the amount of obesity, even in children, has so dramatically increased. I have read so much about this, and I hear so much, and I don't know the answer to the question, and it's not only in America. Do you have a theory? Yeah, you know, I've, I've been following this and studying it. It's, you know, my degree is in exercise physiology and nutrition from Tulane University. And I've been in this business for well over 40 years doing one thing, weight loss. And there were some key things back in the early 80s that just did not make sense to me. One being that you can exercise your way to being lean and fit again. Um, and t- listen to what I'm saying, Dennis, because... I'm a guy who tells people to exercise, yet exercise is a horrible way to try to lose weight. It, it all falls under this, this calorie in, calorie out, and go into a deficit 
category. And it just, if it worked, everyone who ever did Weight Watchers would still be thin because that's a calorie out, calorie in, calorie out system. Everyone would be thin. Um, but what we're asking people to do is, hey, run your car out of gas. And once the tank is empty, keep making the car go down the road. Well, the, you can't work that way. The, the laws of thermodynamics does not play out that way in the human body. So it has to be something we're eating, something we're ingesting. And it's several things. Um, it's sugars of all sorts. And that, folks, anyone who's new to this is not just regular cane sugar. It's high fructose corn syrup. It's allulose. It's honey. Sugar is sugar is sugar. If it's sweet, it's sugar. And all of the fake sugars also that we've, you know, we've gone through. And grains. You know, the, you know we tell people it's a heart-healthy thing to eat a grain. And it's not. And on top of all of that, if that wasn't bad enough, we started serving what I call three-in-one oil. Remember three-in-one oil? You put it in the sewing machine and you, you looped up things with it. We, we took that and we said, okay, these are seed oils and they're healthy for you, when nothing could have been further from the truth. Okay, we're going to come back. Uh, Vinny Tortoriches, we're going to play a, a, an opening minute of it. It's up at PragerU. And it's titled, America is Fat, But You Don't Have to Be. Back in a moment, Vinny. I mean, a lot of people okay. a lot of people have different theories on this. I have found Vinny to be uh, very credible over these years. You all have helped build my pillow into the incredible company it is today and have trusted in Mike Lindell to give you a great night's sleep. On top of the special available to my listeners on the Percale and Giza Dream bed sheets, marked down as low as $29.98, Mike is now changing the game with his three piece towel set. This set is made with USA cotton, making it extremely absorbent yet still providing the soft feel you look for in a towel. This set comes with one bath, one hand towel, and one washcloth, typically retailing for $49.99. For a limited time, you can get this three-piece towel set for the low price of $19.98 with the promo code Prager. Don't miss out on these extraordinary offers. There's a limited supply, so be sure to order now. 800-761-6302. Use the promo code Prager or go to MyPillow.com. Click on the radio listener square and use the promo code Prager. Here is the beginning of Vinnie Tortorich's Prager U video that is up this week titled, America is Fat, But You Don't Have to Be. Get fit. My answer is, fit to be what? A power lifter? A marathon runner? Or maybe you want to look good, feel good, or just know everything works. I've been a personal trainer for 40 years. I've trained Hollywood celebrities, captains of industry, stay-at-home moms, and ultra-athletes. I've trained post-surgical clients, overweight children, and obese adults. I've seen health, diet, and exercise fads come and go. But three things endure. Three behaviors that must be repeated day after day to get fit, stay healthy, and earn a spot on what I like to call the fitness middle class. What is the fitness middle class? Look at a picture from Woodstock, 1969. I challenge you to find 10 overweight people or 10 bodybuilders. The extremes just aren't there. Everyone looks trim. That is, or was, the fitness middle class. All right, so that's a great that's example what of what I'm asking Vinny. So what happened? Yeah, well, several things happened. Um, we, <laughs> we moved inside, right? Um, the Industrial Revolution uh, ended at some point. We weren't outside working. We weren't getting sunlight, which is one of the three things I talk about in the video. Um, we weren't on our feet. We sit around. I mean, I, I feel I, I get sickened for, for kids today. I see them sleep. So even when I go to the gym, I, you know, even though I have a gym at home, I go out to the public gym and I look around and in between sets, these kids will sit for as long as five, six, seven minutes slumped over looking at a phone. That's a problem. Um, they're sitting there and, you know, you can't say I went to the gym and worked out for an hour when you sat and looked at your phone the same as you would have done at home where you weren't getting any sunlight. You know, so that's a big issue. 
uh, we don't move enough. That that's a problem. <clears throat> it's not just about so you know when I say exercise is a poor way to lose weight. People say to me, and I think you even asked me one time, why should I exercise at all? And the answer is it's the it's the fountain of youth. It, you know, Jack Lane told us years ago, you use it or lose it. Um, your dentist always says, always floss the teeth you want to keep. It's the same when it comes to muscle. Only work the muscles you want to keep. Otherwise, they're going to go away, and you're not going to be a healthy individual. And look, we saw this during the pandemic. Right, so let me just make clear to everybody, exercise is very, very good for you, but it is not the way to lose weight for most people. Is that a fair Mm -hmm. summary? For everyone, it's not a way to lose okay. it. You, you lose, you gain and lose weight based on your diet. On your diet. On okay, that. so let's go back to diet now. What changed in diet? We got away from eating red meat. We got away from eating fish. We got away from eating fresh red meat and vegetables. And we started getting into processed foods. Uh, we got, in the you know, all the sugars and grains that come with that. Um, we made processed foods. Grains are very cheap. Um, I, I always use Taco Bell as an example. When I was in college, you got two for 99 cents. And in today's world, you can still get two for 99 cents or less. So everything else has been inflated except Taco Bell. So how do they magically do this? Every fast food restaurant can get sugars and grains. is subsidized by the government. It's almost free to give to people. We have these school programs for kids where we're telling them that pizza is a vegetable. Um, we, and I'm not making that's not being funny. That, that was done during the Obama administration. Um, we, we tell people that um, chocolate milk is good for these kids. Strawberry flavored milk is good. They're adding sugar to milk. We're putting sugars and grains everywhere at Dennis. What's wrong with grains? Um, grains, um, were never meant to be eaten in the amounts we're eating them. You know, if, if you want to use it to, you know, to fill out a meal, um, that's fine. And look at how we did that through the years. No one was fat in 1940s, 50s, or 60s at all. Um, because we, even though we were eating grains, um, we also had meat and fish and poultry on the plate. That was the mainstay. Grains were a a side dish. In the morning, even in the South, if you had eggs and grits, the grits was on the side. The eggs and the bacon were the main dish. When when we had the McGovern Committee that studied uh, in in the late 1960s, they were trying to figure out how to come up with food stamps. So the McGovern Committee met for 10 years. And during that time, um, the food industry got in there. And at the end of the 10 years in 1978, they got together and said, okay, we're going to just say grains are good because everyone can make a buck on that. So it was more of a political slash, hey, we can all make a buck on this. Vinny, I got a final question. If uh, you could have one food, what would it be? If I had to eat one food, it would either be, I'm going to give you two, red meat or eggs. They're both, you can eat those two foods indefinitely and survive. Watch his uh, video up at PragerU this week. America's fat, but you don't have to be. Vinny, it's always great to talk to you. Same here, Dennis. Have a great day. Thank you, and happy Thanksgiving. We return momentarily. The Dennis Prager Show. This story out of USC, which is I bring to you because it was prompted by this anti-Thanksgiving piece in the L.A. Times. You know what scum you have to be in this country to hate Thanksgiving? Do you know how sick, despicable, destructive you have to be? It's not the same as teaching the true history of the United States. It has nothing to do with being anti-Thanksgiving. This is a wrecking ball. It's a wrecking crew, the left. I never heard of this guy, but apparently some people here have. John Leguizamo, an actor. Happy Indigenous Survivors Day. F Thanksgiving. Well, he's a giant. This guy is a hate America giant. Again, an empty life. 
he finds meaning in crapping on this country that has done so good for him. He said last year, critical race theory is, quote, my whole reason for being. Isn't that charming? It probably is. Yeah. That, that's probably true. So I said that the this story out of USC that just, it happened a couple of years ago wherein a professor was noting about fillers that we use like um, uh, uh, well, like, and he gave the Chinese example and the word sounded like the N-word in English, but it wasn't the N-word and it, and it sounded like, but it didn't sound exactly like. And so the black students at the, at the business school demanded that he uh, be removed from teaching or suspended. Black MBA candidates. And the dean of the school, be, remember, you can't be a dean if you're not a coward. This guy, Jeffrey uh, Garrett, is, a, is just another, uh, I want to keep my job, so I will, I will say whatever is necessary in my advanced case of prostitution. It is simply unacceptable for faculty to use words in class that can marginalize, hurt, and harm the psychological safety of our students. If he actually cared about black students, you know what he would have said? Nobody insulted you. Nobody hurt you. Nobody marginalized you. The word is Chinese. Get over it. Grow up. Because life, if that's your big problem in life, Chinese words that sound like an N-word, you have no problems in life. Shows you how little racism there is in America. That that is considered racism. Are you a successful loan officer in the mortgage business looking to grow your business in 2023? Are you looking for a dynamic and supportive work environment with the team I trust? Are you looking for a wonderful culture with people that share your values? Andrew Del Rey and Ted Avakian of andrewandtodd.com are looking for experienced loan officers to join their team. They're looking for people that value their clients and are solution-based problem solvers. Maybe you've worked in an environment that treats loan officers and their clients like a number and you're ready for a real and meaningful change. They have offices in Southern California, but service clients nationwide. So whether you're in California or out of state, I invite you to talk to them about joining their team. Call them at 888-888-1172. That's 888-1172. Or click the Join Our Team button at andrewandtodd.com. Hi, everybody. This is the Male Female Hour on the Dennis Prager Show, the second hour every Wednesday. Because Wednesday begins with the word wed. Yes, I finally came up with that. Well, I have some topic today. Whoa, ho, ho. This is going to be intense. Because I deal with the real issues of men and women. And... I am very comfortable with talking about any aspect of male-female relations. The elephant in the room is very often ignored because people are afraid to acknowledge its presence. I got a either a call or a text from a young man who is extremely successful, and I don't mean financially, I mean he, uh, he may be, I, I don't know his finances, but who, just trust me, he's very successful, he's prominent, and he's married, and I, I know his wife, She's a, she is beautiful in, in every way as it happens. She is physically beautiful, and she has a beautiful heart. And he r- regards me as a sort of father figure. 
and has periodically asked my advice on matters, and I have been honored to, to give it to him. So the last or a, a recent question that he posed to me was he has heard my lectures on men and women, on male sexuality, etc. So he said, so basically the question went, what does a guy do to, to stay faithful? So I am posing this question to uh, you, my listeners, especially to men, but if women have something to say about it, that's fine. Now you might say, well, why don't I pose the question equally to women? And the answer is because I live on earth and not in the academic world. On earth, it is usually tougher for men all things being equal, an equally fine marriage for both spouses, it is more of a challenge for a man to stay monogamous than for the woman. That is, that is men's battle, or one of men's battles. Each sex has its nature to battle. Been one of the biggest themes of all of my life. You have to battle your nature to lead a good life, lead a noble life even. So what what do you do? Which is important that I noted how beautiful his wife is. Because as you probably know from Hollywood, there is a lot to be learned from Hollywood because their lives are so public. So it is remarkable how often you read about men having an extramarital affair, one-night stand, whatever you want to call it or whatever it is, married to some gorgeous woman. And I'm sure a lot of men think he's married to her or he's living with her and he's cheating. Yes, because variety is as built into male sexual drive as any other aspect of his sexual nature. Women don't know this because they, well, some women do, but most women don't because they don't have the same drive for variety. If you think that women do have the same drive for variety, it only means that college was extremely effective in persuading you to believe idiocies which it is. College is very effective in persuading people to believe idiocies. Pure, simple variety is part of the male sexual makeup. It is instinctive. If you believe in evolution, there's an evolutionary explanation that makes 100% sense. And that is, evolution only cares about the species, not the individual. And having males inseminate as many females as possible is good for the species. That's it. If you don't uh, believe that the, that the evolutionary explanation explains it all, then you can simply argue that's the way men are made for whatever reason, but you can't deny that that is the way men are made. Men want variety. Or as one wit put it, men love women and women love a man. That was a very intelligent comment. It's not for me. I wish it were but I never take credit for a comment that I didn't come up with. That's, that's male nature. It's bad news for both sexes. But that is the way it is. And what is the serenity prayer that, I, uh, that allow me to accept what is not changeable is part of it. 
change what is changeable and have the wisdom to know the difference. You can't change nature. You don't have to act on your nature, and we hope that men won't act on their nature in this regard, but it is their nature. So here's the question. You're a normal guy. What do you do, what have you done, to stay faithful? Indeed, a, a, a question that you will never hear on a college campus because foolish people teach kids how to be foolish, is, is there any role a wife can play in helping her husband stay faithful? That question is so forbidden because it deals with the, with the difficult reality and the woke world, the left world, the progressive world, is in a war with reality. People who say men give birth can say anything. one 8 prager seven seven six eight seven seven two four three triple seven six. What does a man do? What advice would you give to the wonderful young man who asked me that question? It's a big one. I haven't dressed it in that way. I have dressed male nature often on the male-female hour. I went even as far as, and some of you wives called in and actually had, had acted upon this suggestion. If your husband, for example, is, is on the road periodically, or even more than periodically, certainly, and is faithful... It's worth saying periodically, you know, honey, I understand male nature and I want you to know how much I appreciate you're not straying. You're a good man and I'm a lucky woman. And he's a lucky man if you say such things. Nothing I have said since I opened this broadcast will you hear at a college in the United States of America? Because it's true. Isn't that eerie? Back in a moment. Okay, let's see what you folks have to say. This is funny. Ron in Plainfield, Illinois. Hello, Ron. Hey, Dennis. Um, yeah, first time caller. Um, but for me, it'd be family and what it would cost to get an attorney if, uh, you know, if the male is not faithful. <laughs> Cause I, I went through a divorce, but right. the tables were turning on the other side and it costs tons and tons of money. And I'll, I'll tell you what, um, uh, probably 20 out of 25 people I know it was, you know, the female that actually cheated on the and the husband. Really? Yep. Well, it's not because they're variety oriented. It's because they were unfulfilled in the marriage. Well, I think they hear things from other women from work. It seems like it, I know that happened to a lot of them where, you know, the benefits of, you know, leaving your husband with getting alimony and oh okay that that yeah that's fair that that may be a factor but uh, i'm dealing with the issue of variety orientation i I would like to know it's hard for me to believe i mean i'm totally up for believing it if it's true I, i don't i don't reject truths because it's hard for me to believe that truth but the uh the amount of infidelity uh, would still strike me as more likely to come from males than from females. It's an interesting topic, by the way. I think we should do that. What What is your take? I, I I'm not posing that today, but I will. I will in the future. What is your take on which sex is more likely 
or not more likely, which sex does, in fact, have an extra mar- more extramarital affairs. But I am talking about the male because the male has the variety orientation. My own instinct has always been that if a woman cheats and uh, or a woman has an affair, it's very often prompted by much more complex issues than she wants another body. That's not what animates women. Usually, it's she's looking for something that she doesn't feel she's getting at home. Or she just may have fallen in love at work. I mean, all of these things can happen. But it isn't, again, oh, what I really want is another male to... Uh, to be in bed with. One eight Prager seven seven six. Okay, let's go to uh, uh, Corona Del Mar, California, and Ken. Hello, Ken. Dennis, how are you? Okay, thank you. You know, I think, especially with religious men, it's important if they have the impulse to want, like your prominent friend, to be faithful, before any circumstances or situations that that test that fidelity happen, if he's religious, he needs to be on his knees and realize that the commitment to marriage involves much more than just his wife. It involves his testimony to God. It involves his wife. It involves his children, if he has any, and it involves the betterment of society altogether. And he has to know and understand that his personal integrity rides on his ability to uh, honor that commitment he made to his wife and before his God. Okay. That's, That's a beautiful sentiment, and I couldn't agree more. I don't know how often that works. I don't believe, and, and, and I, by the way, I agree with everything that was said. It's a, it's a, it's a given. When I, I didn't marry until I was 32, I just want you to know for the record that even when I had never been married, I understood the complexity of marriage. And I, I never jumped to, uh, and I'm not saying this man did, I'm just, this is, an independent thought. I I had never judged people who uh, strayed uh, sexually uh, in their marriage. I the act is wrong, but I I I wasn't prepared to say in every case, oh, that's a villain, whether it was male or female. I I know I even. Then, even before I was ever married, I knew the complexities of life were deep, and in marriage in particular. So the question is a very good one that this young, prominent man asked me. What does a man do to try to keep himself faithful? Maybe have a... uh, uh, Maybe have the bill sent by an attorney an attorney to somebody divorcing on his refrigerator. Hello there, Dennis Prager, male female hour every Wednesday, second hour. So what do you do? This is addressed to men, but I, women are totally invited to comment. What do you do to keep yourself faithful since male sexual nature is variety oriented? Something that the vast, vast majority, almost no woman can fully understand. It's like asking men to understand menstruation, I guess. It. It's not a perfect analogy, but it'll suffice for now. The desire for a variety. What is it, King Solomon? What did he have? A thousand wives? 
Can you imagine a woman who wants a thousand husbands? <laughs> I m- m- most most men think so whether it's true or not is irrelevant, but that's the story. Most men think, "Wow, goody for King Solomon." <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, Jonathan in Prescott, Arizona, hello. Hey, Dennis, thank you for taking my call. You are, you're just a godsend to this world. But, thank you, um, that's very Quickly sweet. answer your question. Yep. Thank you. Um, men, the only real way I see men being able to stay faithful is to simply keep yourself out of any situation that would allow you to have those temptations or those thoughts or those desires. Well, I you had me completely on your side till the last part. I don't think you can ever abolish the thoughts and desires. I think you can abolish the mm-hmm. behavior. So uh, your first part is extremely good advice. Avoid situations that that could make it likely for you to act on your thoughts. Yeah. Okay. And to me, one of the biggest ones is like going out for an evening of drinks with your buddies. You'll be, be smart about it. Either check in with your wife or bring her with you or right, right. don't go to places where you're tempted to pick up or even that's, talk to right. another member of the opposite sex. Uh, I think that's an excellent piece of advice. I, I am a total behaviorist, so it is right up my alley, that piece of advice. If you don't put yourself in a situation which can make it possible or even likely, just don't put yourself in those situations. That's a very good piece of advice. That's that's entirely right. Okay, good one. Uh, Mark, Naperville, Illinois. Hello. Good afternoon, Dennis. It's the same to you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, so I wanted to quickly mention to you something a little different a lot of what some of the previous callers have mentioned, and that is I actually uh, have been married. Hey, you, you broke and, up. Wait, wait, wait. You broke up, unfortunately. Um, I, uh, wait, 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 wait. You're, I, I didn't hear. I've actually been married, and then it broke up. Uh, All right, we don't I've have... been married for – I've been married – all right, it's not and, working. It's not. It we're not working, unfortunately. I can only summarize what was written. I'm. I'm very sorry, Mark, but it it, it just keeps uh, skipping words. I play forward in my head, thinking what the consequences would be. That's a good one. That is a good one. I think. I think another. Another help. Is if a if the the wife allows her husband to speak openly about his inner sexual life, about his thoughts, it is very calming for a man to be able to open up about about what he thinks in that realm in other words the more he feels he he has to hide from her i think that 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 doesn't that doesn't help this is a subject i have discussed in the past on the uh, on the male female hour about men hiding their natures from their wives because they're afraid of what her reaction would be. You really think that way? Yeah, that's right. But I don't act on it, honey, and that's what matters. So that, I think that that's an arena that can help. There are other things I think that a wife can do, but I put the 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 onus on the, on the husband in any event. It's it's his it's his life and his behavior.
All right, everybody, the last hour prior to the Thanksgiving holiday weekend. And I wonder how many of your kids' schools have tried to smear Thanksgiving the way the L.A. Times did today and the chief piece on its opinion page, crapping on Thanksgiving. They crap on everything good. This the distinguishing feature, a distinguishing feature of the left. The nuclear family, religion, Mother's Day, Father's Day. I mean, that that's one of the oldest ones. We can't have Mother's Day at school. There are kids who have two fathers. I remember battling that issue 25 years ago. Yep, if it's beautiful, like art, the left destroys it. Tell me what uh, what art is beautiful produced by the the contemporary art world. Yes, beauty is an is an ugly word on the left. So, one eight Prager seven seven six open lines because I won't be live on Friday for open lines. So whatever is on your mind, including what's happening to Thanksgiving. They want to get rid of it like they got rid of Columbus Day. There'll be nothing left. That was, that's what they'll like. Solstice Day, Equinox Day, that's what they'll have. That's their dream. By the way, I do admit to an interest in the World Cup. The number, by the way, is one eight prager seven seven six one eight. Seven seven, what is it? One eight seven seven triple seven six. Is that right? Yeah, eight seven seven triple seven six. If I don't say it the way I'm used to saying it, they they don't come out. A thousand to one upset in the World Cup, Saudi Arabia defeating Argentina two to one. But I'd like to just remind you all who predicted that. I won't even say. A word to the wise is sufficient. Eight seven seven two four three triple seven six. That's what it is. Eight seven seven two four three triple seven six, or one eight Prager seven seven six. Wonder how many of you will be having your first Thanksgiving with some people for the first time in three years. The last one would have been 2019, right before the lockdowns. And what will that be like? But I am very curious, how is Thanksgiving treated in our public schools, which are so woke, and private schools too, by the way? Do they tell the kids, you know... You may not want to really celebrate Thanksgiving because it's uh, it's really a fake holiday, and because the treatment of Native Americans was so bad afterwards, you know, you should really uh, reconsider your celebrating this this holiday. I don't know if your kids have been getting that message. It's a very uh, very interesting thing to pursue. Yep. Get real about Thanksgiving. I read it to you. I read parts of it to you. The three-day meal in the autumn of 1621 was less a predictor of future goodwill among all Americans than a historic aberration. But isn't that an acknowledgement that it took place? That there, so, so what? that's wrong to celebrate because things turned out to be Violent? That's a great point. <laughs> so what we're celebrating is accurate. So you shouldn't celebrate any goodwill between whites and, and Native Americans. But I have a question, and it, 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 in no way does it diminish the suffering of both whites and, and Indians which are real, and and a lot of the treatment of Indians was morally wrong. There's no question. However, in the broader sense, would the world have been a kinder, finer place 
if Europeans never came to North America? That's a question to, to, uh, that none of your kids' teachers will address when they're, when they're busy redefining American history as just plain ugly. It was, a, it was a beautiful holiday, Thanksgiving. Keep it beautiful. I'll be very curious next week to hear how your Thanksgiving went. Was politics broached? Do the people... Here is really even more interesting to me is this question. Do the people who most vigorously opposed getting together because of COVID... Do they, in retrospect, think that they were right? So I'm curious. Do they think it was right to keep kids out of school for nearly two years? I don't know the answer. I would be very curious to know. Okay, let's see. Uh, Let's go to... Dallas, Texas, and Chris. Hello, Chris. Hi, Dennis. Hi. to speak to you. Thank you. Uh, I had a question. I, I heard on your radio segment, uh, the last segment, I think you said that uh, you no longer supported the, the Salvation, Salvation Army. And I remember um, you talking about, um, I think it was several years ago, that where you had said that um, you're not into boycotting as a conservative, you know, you, it's that's for the left to do. You know, we don't do that. Um, and I remember when you said that years ago, I thought, well, that's not what I, that's not what I think. I don't want to support uh, leftist organizations and and companies. Uh, so I wonder if that was is this a sign of you? Have you changed your mind? Yes. Very flatly. Yes. Uh, OK, is I don't I, I wouldn't I wouldn't take my I wouldn't take my grandchildren to Disney World or Disneyland. Yes, sir. They have gone. They okay. are. They are, they do so much evil. These big corporations that uh, I, I can no longer justify. Remember, I for years I said I can't stand Ben and Jerry, two of the most foolish human beings to have been born in America, in the twentieth century, and yet I would eat their ice cream because I I don't believe in boycotting. Uh, ben and Jerry are 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 so destructive that it is very difficult to justify getting Ben and Jerry's ice cream. Uh, they have, they that have, your mind, was it a, that they have gone, was that it a, they have gone over the top. They have, they have, well, they them. don't, they don't merely have opinions. I don't share. I don't care about that. They are now destroying the country. I can't buy the products of people I believe are destroying my country. I don't want to support it. the vicious. If Disneyland will no longer say boys and girls, they have become scum in my eyes. The Disney Corporation is despicable. I don't want to help them in any possible way. I hope they go under and decent people who will say boys and girls welcome to Disneyland will take them over. They, 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 that they have the name Disney is a farce, is just a farce. Yes, so I did. I changed my mind. That's exactly right. I was proud of the fact for so many decades. I don't agree with you, but I'll buy your product if I like your product. That's the way free markets should work. However, the left is so destructive. They went from liberal to left, therefore from decent to indecent. They went from foolish to evil. Okay? Okay. How could I possibly bring my grandchildren to a place that won't call my grandchildren a boy or a girl? Why would I do that? Is the, is the importance of having them have a day at Disneyland greater than the importance of preserving the notion that there are boys and girls in the world? That's the question. Look, most conservatives take their kids to Disneyland and Disney World. It's too painful not to. I don't agree with their decision. I understand it, but I don't agree with it. So that's correct. All right, let's see here. Detroit, uh, Michigan. Mark, hello. 
Oh, hey. Oh, it's great to talk to you. You know, I read, I worked in the medical field for more than 30 years, and I worked in PEDS ICU and all, all the different kinds of specialties and so on. And I read something that was a quotation from uh, UCSF, you know, University of Cal- uh, California, Sci- you know, uh, sure. Children's Hospital, right. which blew my mind. All right. Tell it to us when we come back. We shall return in a moment. Listening to the Dennis Prager Show. Call in on whatever you'd like on this day before Thanksgiving. Okay, all. Whatever is on thy mind. And we have uh, Detroit. Back to you, Mark. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I just was mind blowing for me because I worked in the medical field for more than thirty years, and here's um, um, you know a statement by the University of California San Francisco Children's Hospital. You know, genital surgery is being performed on a case by case basis, more frequently in minors, in the absence of solid evidence. In other words, medical indication for this kind of atrocity. Providers often must rely upon the expert opinions of innovators. You know, what is an innovator? And thought leaders in the field. This is mind-blowing to me. I mean, this is... Yeah, they took uh, this down. To they took it down. Oh, they it's, did. Yes, it's so, it's so humiliating. What is this, UCSF? Yeah. Yeah, University of California, San Francisco is as woke as it gets. Yes. I mean, it's, it's simple as that. It's San Francisco. What do you expect? Moral and intellectual honesty uh, are rare commodities in San Francisco. Yes, let's depend on thought leaders and experts to determine at what age we can cut a young woman's breasts off because she says she's a boy. The lesson to be learned, there are many lessons to be learned, One big lesson to be learned is the ease with which the human species can dull its conscience. The conscience in most people is close to useless. Sorry, most people, yes. Because your conscience will believe whatever you want it to believe. The ability to justify what is wrong is infinite. The left is based on that. The entire world of the left is justifying what is wrong. So, suppress free speech? Of course, because it's hate speech. Take a, a girl's breasts away, chop them off at 18 or even younger? Of course, we're preventing her com- committing suicide. The ability to have your conscience justify the most despicable act is uh, is as is as long as the human race. Okay, we've got that. Okay, Felicia, Mount Pleasant, Pennsylvania. What a sweet place to live in, Mount Pleasant. Hi. Hi, Dennis. How are you? Well, um, I was calling today about um, I was listening to another talk radio station this morning and they were talking about just um, how why would you get together with family on Thanksgiving when you don't agree with them? And I was just thinking how that proves your point, how they just don't want to do away with the holiday and that, you know, you should be getting together with friends and having more friends giving uh, around this time of year instead of being with family that you disagree with. Really? That's what they were saying? So you shouldn't have family members over if you differ with them? Yes, that's what they were saying. And wow. I thought, well, how else do you teach your children that you can differ with people? Oh, my God. Nobody, no, Almost nobody would have relatives over. Well, the whole purpose well, of family is, the whole purpose of family is to teach you how to get along with people you don't like. Yeah. <laughs> And I just found that amazing, and I thought, boy, they just truly, you know, I had to listen just because I wanted to see where that conversation was going. But, I, you know, I, my kids know how to tolerate people and learn from each other. And That's right. That's, you're exactly right. Well, you, you are what we call healthy. That was good. 
That was dark humor for those of you who don't catch on to the concept of dark humor. But there was, but all humor has some truth in it. The a purpose, not the purpose, but a purpose of family is, in fact, to teach you how to get along with people that you may not like, and certainly people that, with whom you differ. Look, you obviously like your friends, and you don't differ with your friends. That's why they're your friends. You choose friends, you don't choose family. So learning to get along with family is a very huge lesson in life. Okay, that was that was the point, and it uh, it is an important one. One eight Prager seven seven six is uh, the the number here. So I've I've cleared up some lines. Whatever is on your mind, it's a sort of like Friday third hour because I won't be live Friday. We won't be have we'll have a best of Dennis Prager Thanksgiving and the next day, so as to give our all the folks who work with us time off the the undoing of the of the finest aspects of american life whether it's thanksgiving or it's the the medical community it is quite it it, it i hope it will be analyzed in the future because if the left wins, the, the, le- the future won't bother analyzing how this happened. But if they don't win, this will be looked at as, an, as the most aberrant period in American history. What happened in the, in the late 20th and early 21st century, the panic and the pathology that took over American life, People might, hopefully, people will look at the fact that Disney stopped saying "Welcome, boys and girls," because they no longer believed that children were divided by these two identities and no other. Oh, how much has been proven to me? You say anything often enough, how many people will believe it? Sex slash gender is non-binary. Whew. That's that's quite something. But there are a lot of us who reject this. That's why they hate uh, Ron DeSantis. We shall return. Hi everyone, Dennis Prager, the day before Thanksgiving, so I'm just opening lines to whatever's on your mind. I hope you have a good Thanksgiving. I hope you celebrate it with vigor and joy and meaning. The LA Times, like the rest of the left, has utter contempt for Thanksgiving. If it's beautiful, the left has contempt for it, whether it's art, music, or holidays. The nuclear family, can you name something beautiful that the left does not have contempt for? Can you? Seriously. No, there isn't anything. You can't, you can't, you can't think of a thing. I mean, what do you want to say, free speech? Uh, well, art, free speech, music, right, art, as I said, art and music. Education, yeah. mm-hmm. run through the list. Right. Sports. It's a completely nihilistic movement. And now the th- now what you're supposed to believe is that if you do not think that girls should have their breasts removed because they say they're boys, talking about young girls, you know, w- women over 25, it's, it, what is the issue? You Right? You can't have a cigarette b- before 21, is that right? Yeah. It's not 18, right? Isn't it 21? Take a look. What was it? There, there was a uh, a woman who came out, or was she? A, I think a doctor. You shouldn't be able to have a tattoo before you're 18, but you can have your breasts cut off. That you can determine. That's New York, um, New York law. New York law, right? Okay.
those of us who love the beautiful and the wholesome, it is impossible to understand the left's mind. It is not, it's, it, it, the gulf is that great. I understand people who have certain positions in life. I understand people who, uh, who are for the minimum wage, and I'm not. I, 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 I get it. But to tell parents that they have to welcome their 11-year-old's decision to change sexes, and that if a parent says to their 11-year-old girl, you're really a girl, God made you a girl, uh, is to risk losing your daughter to child protective services. One eight Prager seven seven six, and now that we're told, what is the latest? Of course, that the attack in in uh, in Colorado Springs was a result of conservatives warning about what is happening to young people and their early sexualization. There is nothing left won't won't say. Truth is not a factor. Oh, Kadoke, everybody. And let's go to Northridge, California. Mitchell, hello. Dennis. Yeah. You have a bully pulpit, and I'm, I'm hoping you're going to see things my way on this. The media and people on the radio and television consistently refer to the Democrats as the Democratic Party. It's not the Democratic Party. It's the Democrat Party. And we are, as you know, we're not a democracy. And that gives them, using the term democratic, in my opinion, gives them a credibility and a cachet that they don't deserve. They don't deserve if, it, but that's their name. No, the name of the party is the Democratic no, Party. No, it isn't. No, the name of the party is the Democratic Party. That is the official name. That is name the official in name. That is, that is correct. It's never been the Democrat Party. That's why I call them the Democratic Party. That's their name. That they that right. they don't give a damn about democracy is is beside the that's point. True. Okay, that's be, but uh, uh, the, so I attack the Democratic Party as the negative, destructive, vile force that it has become, but I do not change their name. So that, that's um, that that's been my position. I I certainly get why people would say the Democrat Party. I do because it rankles them that they would be called democratic. But by the way, to a certain extent, certain extent, they are the Democratic Party. That's why they got their name. They think everything should be determined, in theory, unless it goes against them, everything should be determined by majority vote. And the founders of this country feared the majority mob. And that's why we're a a republic or at least not a democracy. We don't elect our president by popular vote. We don't elect our Senate by popular vote. Senate is as undemocratic as you can get. Wyoming has two senators. Rhode Island has two senators. And California has two senators. That's that's exactly what they feared. I was lost until I saw your halo. Hey everybody, Dennis Prager here. Whatever is on your mind, because today is the last day of my broadcast week, because tomorrow is Thanksgiving, and we give my staff off for these these days here. Here's an interesting little tidbit for you while you call in. Voters in Los Angeles from the L.A. Times were mildly positive about departing Mayor Eric Garcetti's handling of homelessness, even though the number of people living on the streets increased during his two terms. More than 53% agreed that the Garcetti administration has, quote, effectively addressed the issue. 
Well, I'm, you don't believe it. I love the fact that you don't believe it. I'm serious. Yeah, I don't believe it. I don't think anybody, I, I, it's not possible. L.A. voters approved more money to fight homelessness. Now they want to see results. Fine. Okay. So if you look at the article, you will see that they feel that he, uh, well, where is this article from? Anyway, that's, that is the state. People, the delusion to vote for a Democrat that has to take place, oh, crime isn't that bad, oh, homelessness is not that bad, oh, fentanyl is not that bad, teen depression is not that bad, lockdown schools for two years is not that bad. See? That's what you have to say to vote for a Democrat, and people do. That's... uh... That's the only way in which you can justify. Remember, the conscience is incredibly weak. Incredibly weak. That's why it is so naive. Oh, I don't need a God. I don't need a Bible. I don't need religion. I just follow my conscience. Oh, because the record of the conscience has been so spectacular in human history, right? You know many murderers are in prison and live okay with their conscience? The conscience is a muscle that needs to be developed. Okay, let's go on here. Hmm. Uh, Emerson, New Jersey, and Richard, hello. Hello, Mr. Prager. It's an honor to speak with you. Thank you. I'll try to be brief. Um, my question is, the left, they believe that Trump is evil. And I've heard you say that it they may have a moral obligation to cheat, but we do believe that the left is evil. Why don't we have the same moral obligation to cheat the way they do in their elections? Thank you for your time. Yes. It's, I believe that it is wrong for us to cheat. And, but the question is not a silly question. If you understand the damage the Democratic Party does, at what point, and this is true for left or right, at what point is cheating in elections justified? One of my beliefs, and I've said it often, and it's irrefutable, is you cannot say Donald Trump is is a fascist, neo-Nazi, anti-Semite, racist, and then say, oh, but of course I would never cheat in a presidential election involving, involving Donald Trump. I, they're, they're sort of mutually exclusive ideas. It, if it came to preventing a fascist neo-Nazi from being elected, cheating would be called for morally. So why doesn't it apply to my side is what the questioner posed, and it's a very fair one. As evil as I believe they are, standing up for honest voting is the greater moral good. That is my belief. I'll give you an example. I know that with free speech comes evil speech or hate speech, as the left puts it. But I am willing to say free speech is more important than suppressing evil speech. Fair elections are more important than suppressing the evil party of the Democrats. So I hold free speech and I hold free elections to be essentially sacrosanct. That's the uh, that's the term. Long Beach, California. Jerry, hello. Hey, Dennis. I uh, disagree with you having a problem with the term grooming being used of what's happening in schools. Uh, grooming is an attempt to sexualize minors to be oriented towards non-marital sex in a way that's legal. Grooming could be a tactic for molesting a minor, or it could be an end in itself. 
Uh, the left hates the term. Well, wait, what, what does it mean end in itself if it's not a tactic to, to use? In other words, there, there, are, there are creeps that have no intention of touching a minor that still want to groom minors. It could be over the Internet or it could be leaving sexual material. Okay, wait, so what does groom mean? I, I'm, not gonna, I'm not arguing. I, just, what is yeah. gr- I thought groom meant you, you manipulate a child into sexual activity. Uh, that would still be accurate, but it doesn't necessarily have to be with the person that's doing the grooming. So I'm grooming on behalf of people I don't know? Uh, for example, in schools, the left is using, uh, see, the left uses, hates the term grooming in schools because it reveals the truth that sexual preferences and orientation can be influenced. It's not simply a matter of being born that way. The goal of grooming in schools is to create a culture where future generations will have a right. higher percentage so, okay. of those who identify. Uh-huh. Okay, all of that is true. I just don't. I thought grooming meant what we defined it as. Back in a moment. Get to me the sooner or later. Well, everybody, I want to wish you a meaningful, happy Thanksgiving. It's becoming a sort of counter to the left to celebrate Thanksgiving as the original beautiful holiday was meant to be. What could be more beautiful than a day of the year set aside to be grateful? However, ingratitude is one of the essential characteristics of the left. Here's a puzzle to ask a leftist, not a liberal, a leftist. So tell me, what are you grateful for? What would they say? Maybe my health, they might say that. Is there anything as an American you're grateful for? That's a real, that is going to really stump them. Get a BA in ingratitude, an MA in ingratitude, and a PhD in ingratitude when you go to American universities. By the way, I ask you to do something that gratitude always leads to generosity and donate to the Angel Tree campaign, which I'm doing this year instead of the Salvation Army which went woke on me a few years ago. Not on me, just went woke. That really hurt, I got to say. I'll cover that again. Anyway, there's a banner for Angel Tree up at my website. million and a half kids have a parent in prison. They'll get a gift, hopefully a note from a parent, and an introduction to religion. That's what they can use. So give whatever you can. There is a banner up at DennisPrager.com. Nice thing to do. If you haven't, if you haven't had a a given relative to celebrate Thanksgiving with in the last three years or last two years, ask them if they think and gently just. Do you think it was worth not having Thanksgiving together when you look back at it? Let me know what the results are. Well, I'll ask you on Monday. In the meantime, from my home to yours, a truly happy and meaningful, beautiful Thanksgiving. The Dennis Prager Show, live from the Relief Factor pain-free studio. Dennis Prager here. Thanks for listening to the Daily Dennis Prager Podcast. To hear the entire three hours of my radio show, commercial-free, every single day, become a member of PragerTopia. You'll also get access to 15 years' worth of archives, as well as the daily show prep. Subscribe at PragerTopia.com.